Hello and welcome back to the Reapers. So we're in our F5E Tiger 2 and today we're looking at radar for search and track in BVR beyond visual range and then track within visual range and firing weapons. First we're going to talk a bit about the theory of the radar, then we're going to talk about the various controls that we need and then we're going to actually uh, have a go at it. First of all, tiny bit of theory. Uh, so we are going to shoot with our radar a radar beam out the front of our aircraft. Um, if you'd like to visualize it, I like to describe it when I'm teaching people that it is like a slice of cake, a thin slice of cake. We are at the pointy end of the thin slice of cake. And as the slice of cake gets away from the aircraft, it obviously gets wider laterally and it also gets thicker in terms of elevation. That said, the elevation is actually quite thin. It's probably about 10 degrees, if that. And the lateral angle, I think, is 60 to 80 degrees. So it's a lot wider in terms of lateral. This slice of cake I call the scan zone. And within the scan zone, we have a radar beam that basically scans left and right and highlights any targets within that. Any targets that get hit by this radiation beam will reflect radiation back, which will be received by our receiver. It will then be processed and presented to us on our radar screen. Now, one important thing to point out is that the radar in this F5 is fairly prehistoric and it does not have IFF capability, so it will present everything to you as a hostile. Now, let's look at the controls. So first, we've got the scope. So this is like a, basically a top-down view of our slice of cake scan zone. We are positioned here, essentially, and we're looking out to our 12 o'clock, which is that direction. Now, if we look at the symbology, we've got numbers to our left and our right here. These are the degrees of our scan zone. So out here is 30 degrees, out here is 30 degrees, here is 0 degrees. Now, talking elevation, here is our elevation, minus 30 degrees, plus 30 degrees. And that is actually the elevation that our antenna, our, our transmitter, if you like, is pointing. And we can actually manually cycle that transmitter up and down. Remember, the thickness of our scan zone is very thin. Thin, and therefore we will want to what we call sleeve it up and down manually to make sure we scan the entire sky in front of us. This marker here shows where our antenna elevation is set currently about zero. Now this radar like all radars are gyroscopically mounted so that wherever you aim the plane within reason they will auto always be facing at the horizon line so if I dive down the radar would still be centered on the horizon line that's displayed by these two bars here uh, the center pitch line and that can be adjusted as well so if we want the radar to be uh, not centered at the horizon but centered above or below we can do that next we've got our b scope line which is this line here this vertical line and it'll be going left to right and left to right and that is our actual radiation beam with inside our scan zone next we've got our tdc cursor it's these two little lines here this is something we can move about our scope and manipulate targets with basically lock targets up with which we'll look later uh, we've got some basic knobs around the scope what would we got here scale so that's i think the brightness of the grids here we've got pitch here this allows us to cycle our horizon line up and down like we said earlier uh, here we've got the current range set currently five miles it can go up to 44 zero miles here we've got a cursor knob this shows this changes the brightness of our bars here here and here video uh, this it changes our lock-on sensitivity which I haven't really tried out yet but uh, that's what it says on the manual here we've got our uh, image latency PER and our brightness changes the brightness of the background so you can have a play with them if it's night mode if you're flying at night you may want to change that next we've got some more radio uh, radar controls we've got the range here we can set as 5 10 20 or 40 miles uh, just note that we can only lock targets within 10 miles like i said it's a pretty uh, puny radar so that's uh, the best we've got uh, not that it really matters because uh, our missiles can only um, reach 10 miles maximum in best conditions anyway here we've got the master mode we can have it off standby operational or test uh, once it's off we have to first turn it to standby wait five minutes for it to warm up and then go to operational to use it we've got our antenna elevation here up and down um, next we need to go look at the controls that we'll need to bind um, to this radar to actually use it because you can't go pressing all those knobs that'll be pretty much impossible so first of all let's start with our scale um, now when we talk about radar range it's not actually affecting the radar range the radar range is infinite because that's how radiation works it'll basically go to the end of the universe what we're talking about is the range of our view um, so if it's 40 miles we can view 40 miles on our scope that's what it really means so we've got range selector here um, increase and you'll also want uh decrease next we'll need to aim our antenna up and down our radar emitter up and down so we've got that radar antenna tilt control up and 
tilt control down. Next, we'll need our TDC slew. So, TDC tiles the target designator. That's the thing we're going to move around the scope to lock the target up. Here it is, TDC button up, left, right, down. Next, we're going to need the lock target. So, once you've got the TDC cursor over a hostile, you're going to press Acquire, Acquisition, AQ, U, uh, ACQ button to actually lock the target. It may also be prudent to use this button here, Dogfight Resume Search Switch. Uh, this is for missile combat, so we may need to use that if we're in close range uh, to regain a lock. It's just something to bear in mind. To fire our missile, we will use Weapon Release here. Okay, now we've got our control set, let's go and actually use this thing. So, out we go. Set ourselves roughly on a course. We should have a hostile coming head on with us. So let me just uh, trim myself out. So the first thing we're going to do is uh, to adjust the range. So we're going to zoom the range right out 10, 20 and 40. And you can see already we've got the hostile um, ahead of us there about 30 miles. Regarding deciding what range they're at, well, you can work it out on the grid. Well, the zero is there and 40 miles is there so he's about 35 miles uh, next i want to just scan above and below him by changing my antenna uh, elevation just to make sure there's no other targets and this is something you'll always want to do so i'm aiming my antenna up and there's no targets up there i'm going to now aim it down and you can see there's lots of targets down there they're not targets that's reflections from the ground and it's obvious because you know there's not going to be a hundred targets there uh, so that's how you determine that aim it back up to the middle whoops wrong one there we go as a few seconds delay and we're back we've got our target so what we can determine is that target is roughly about co-altitude to us we can't get any other information about it we don't know its speed uh, or anything like that or its azimuth we just know it's in that direction from us and it's roughly about co-height with us that's all we can get now remember we can't lock until we're within 10 miles so until he gets down to the that kind of area on the scope we can't really do anything so the next thing we're going to do is just speed it up and uh, fly towards him Okay, it's now within 20 miles, so we're now going to change the range of our scope down to 20. And he's now up here at about 17 miles, something like that. What I can show is show uh, is changing my horizontal, uh, my horizon pitch, like so. If I want to do, I don't really know why I'd want to do that, but that is something we could do. Uh, we can also see him visually, right, just about there, if you've got good eyes. Nice clear day. Okay, about 11, 12 miles. Okay, he's within 10 miles now. We're going to knock the scale down again. And we can now lock him up. So we're going to move our TDC slew to go over the target. We're going to press acquire button. And we've now got a lock on him and a change in symbology. First of all, the um, we're no longer scanning the entire sky in our scan zone. We're now just we're tracking him. So our radar is now confined to this area here on the scope. And we can see his range by these two little marks here. 10 miles there, 0 miles there. Uh, the, the is now no longer a top-down view for the ma main radar scope. It's now bore scope, so it's now looking forward, and we can prove that by and that's the hostile there, um, the cross against our horizon pitch. Uh, and so, if I were to aim my nose down, for instance, you can see that that target moves up, and he's roughly centered above the horizon. As well as that, we've got firing symbology. So um, we've got here our ranging reticle. That is the bore site where our plane is flying. This is maximum range here, 10 miles. That is zero miles. So you can see he scrolled in, which is about seven miles, something like that. Next, we need to arm our missiles. So we're going to go to our master arm. We've got these pylons up, which are our missiles. We're going to right click on the master arm there. You can see we've now got a tone. Next, we're going to wait for the uh, for the fire cue, basically. So we've got lock on there, uh, showing us that we've got a lock. We've got a firing cue, in range cue that will come up here when we're, it's calculated that our missile ha is in range, bearing in mind our speed, his speed, our altitude, his altitude, azimuth, blah blah blah, whatnot. So I'm going to hover over him. The only other thing to point out is I'll have to make sure I get a tone as well because these are heat-seeking missiles. They're essentially actually independent from the radar. The radar is purely for our guidance, not for the missile's guidance. We'll have to get a tone lock on him as well. And, and we'll know we get that because we'll get an increase in the pitch of the tone of the growl from the sidewinder. Right, so let's stand by. We've got everything. We've got the tone, so the Sidewinder has independently picked up the heat of his engines. We've got the in-range cue, so that the radar has determined that it's physically within range for the missile to hit him. In-range cue there, our diamond. We can see he's about four miles there on our ranging clock. We can see he's about four miles there on our B-scope. 
on our Soriana scope, and that's about it. So we're going to hold trigger release, fire, and shoot him down. Boom! Die. And we've missed. He's fooled us with his flare. So let's try again. Get some. That's going to get him, I reckon. Boom! One TU-95 down. Uh, that's all there is to it, really. Um, it works... Uh, it works if you're chasing targets or if you're side on to targets. You can see targets much better if they're coming towards you, if they're coming away from you, or they're going side to side. It's much harder for our post Doppler radar to work, but they still do work just at a lesser range. The only other thing to mention is jamming a target. If it has a jammer on board, that plane didn't, but another one might, then it will appear differently if it's jamming. Rather than being in that lovely clean line, it will be a series of lines um, filling up the entire scope vertically. That means they're jamming. That means we can attain the azimuth, but we can't attain information like their vector or their range and that's why you'll see the jamming you can burn through the jamming if you get close enough to, to the target it can no longer fool your radar and you will be able to see it as a proper um, line at some point that point depends on your radar it depends on the hostile strength of jammer so we can't really talk about that that's everything i'd like to cover now i hope that helps and i'll see you later